One day you're the hunter and the next you're the prey. One moment you're on top and another you're down. Sometimes free, sometimes in chains. That's just how gangland works, except for the very lucky few. Outlaw biker boss Tarek Zahed knows this better than most. One moment he's a swaggering boss of a feared motorcycle club destined for underworld power, and the next lying close to death after taking 10 bullets. One moment enjoying dinner with your pals, and the next this. Being hauled from a car on a busy street and battered by tactical police before being handcuffed and arrested for murder. The mob reporter here with news of a triumphant return to the streets for a biker boss, less than four months after an assassination attempt that came perilously close. It's a public return that lasted just a week. Let me tell you about it. The first glimpse we had of Tarek Zahed since his body was shattered by gunfire in an attack that killed his brother came on Instagram. He's seated at a table at an event in Melbourne, with meat on his plate and booze on his table. He's surrounded by friends. Alan Meehan, the national president of the Comanchero Motorcycle Club, has his arms spread around him. A member of a friendly crime family greets the camera with the middle finger. Another photo shows the president kissing his national sergeant at arms on the cheek, while their boys flash more hand signs than a rap video. His head looks fit and fashionable, although I'm sure his dark glasses hide whatever was left behind by a bullet that nearly took his eye. Still, not bad for a guy who took 10 to the chest, head, arms and legs in May. His president tagged the photo, Welcome back, Tarek, and dubbed him Hard to Kill. Hard to Kill. That seems true, but his return to the public eye also means he's not hard to find. Police didn't give him much time for his swagger to return. One week after the photos were posted, he flew back to his hometown of Sydney from Melbourne for a wedding. By a court order, Zahed had to notify police of his movements, so they knew his weekend plans. And as Zahed traveled down a busy road Sunday afternoon in a black BMW hatchback, tactical police rushed in shooting out its windows and forcibly dragging him out, bloodied and battered. This arrest came August 28, 2022. Police made no apology for the rough arrest. He's uh, living the life in Melbourne at the time. We had information that he was up in Sydney uh, and uh, he was given a reception in Sydney that uh, was deserved and uh, he was um, okay. He was battered and bruised and put on the footpath, but um, that's because he was non-compliant. Police described it as a high-risk takedown, saying that since his near-death experience, he is on high alert, and they were worried he, or the man who was with him, might be armed. But no weapons were found. If the less lethal shots didn't make his head spin, then news officers broke to him surely did. He was charged with murder and kidnapping. Those crimes date back to 2014. The victim was Yusuf Asum. Eight years ago, the 29-year-old Assume was found shortly after midnight on the street beside a hospital by an off-duty doctor. He'd been shot in the thigh and stabbed in the head. Despite treatment, he didn't survive his ordeal. Police said Assume was involved in gangs and described this as a gangland slaying, although perhaps more likely it was a gangland kidnapping and punishment that went awry. Assume's social media shows his love for cars, working out, and animals. Lots of animals. Police video of the arrest of Zahed reveals him to be more fragile than the Instagram snaps suggest. He's lost muscle tone and his walk is unsteady. He has a pronounced limp and seems to have difficulty seeing. On September 1st, another man was charged in assumed slaying. The 44-year-old man was arrested at his home and charged with accessory after the fact to murder. He's accused of trying to set Assume's car ablaze. Video of his arrest shows he also likes to give the middle finger salute to the camera. Tarek Sahed survived a vicious hit on him in May, which I told you about in a previous video that I'll link to here and in the description below. Gunman shot up the front of a fitness club just as Zahed and his younger brother Omar were leaving. Both men were hit repeatedly and both went down. Omar died, aged 29. But Zahed made a remarkable recovery 
after fears he would be losing limbs and eyes and never really walk again. Meanwhile, the investigation of who shot Zahed and his brother is still underway, and it's led by the same police task force that just arrested Zahed, Task Force Erebus. Part of Task Force Erebus's charter is not only to solve these organised crime murders, which we, I'm happy to say we are making progress in relation to those murders, but also to stop any further murders or any other shootings. So yesterday's arrest was important for us, considering the calibre of the person that was arrested. Surviving the attempted assassination such as he did will enhance the head's reputation on the street. It builds his legacy even as it diminishes his physical prowess. Hard to kill. That's a flashy hashtag and a cool nickname. It's the kind of name that can really stick in gangland, especially with the media. Until, of course, gangland decides to turn itself upside down again. I've been watching organized crime for decades, and I gotta say, that's the sort of nickname that can become a heavy burden. Eventually, someone will want to rise to that challenge. Please subscribe, comment, and like this video. It really helps its success. And tap the thanks button below this video, or join me on Patreon to help me even more. Thanks for watching.